The nightclub is probably the most complicated business in GTA Online, but at the same time, it's definitely one of the best businesses in the game. There's quite a lot you need to know before you get started with the nightclub, and to be honest, this should probably be one of the last businesses you buy. So if you did buy a nightclub as one of your first businesses, you might struggle to make any money from it. So today I'm going to run you through everything you need to know about the nightclub and how to make the most money and a lot of money from it, even if you did buy it first. And just before we get into the video, if you're struggling to find friends to play with or even if you just want a place to hang out, Join our Guerrilla Gang Discord server. We've almost got 1,000 members over there, so that's a great place to either chat about GTA, find friends, post memes, anything. So go over there. I've also just started a TikTok account where I'll be posting little tips and clips pretty much every day. So I'll leave a link to that below. So definitely go give us a follow over there as well. And let's get stuck in to how to use the nightclub. The first thing we should talk about is the location. And for the most part, the nightclubs generally increase in price the higher up the map you go. So if you want a really cheap nightclub, buy one at the bottom of the map, but I definitely wouldn't recommend that location. Most of the nightclub's cell missions are out in Sandy Shores, and that there are some in Los Santos to be fair, but basically, the further north your nightclub is, the better. I have both of the Vinewood nightclubs, one on PC and one on PS4, and personally, I really like the location, so I'd probably recommend getting one of those two if you can afford it. They're right next to the highways as well, so that makes cell missions a lot easier. So yeah, basically the further north, the better. When you buy a nightclub, you'll see that there's a lot you can customize. All of these are completely cosmetic and won't earn you any money at all. So unless you've got heaps and heaps of money, don't worry about upgrading any of that for now. The one upgrade that isn't just cosmetic only is the storage. You can add up to five levels of storage, which basically is going to increase the amount of stock your nightclub can hold. You can also add up to four levels of garage as well, so if you want another place to store your cars, you can definitely do that. If you're a bit tight on money right now though, don't worry about upgrading your storage right away because there are some expensive upgrades within the nightclub itself that are going to be more important and we'll go over those soon. But if you've got probably over I'd say about five million dollars in the bank then you're probably safe to buy extra storage right from the start. Once you get into your nightclub you will have to do a few setup missions but they shouldn't take too long and then you're in business. Before we get into the nitty gritty stats of the nightclub because there are a lot of stats that we're gonna have to go over, the first thing you should know is there's two ways to make money with the nightclub. The first is through the nightclub itself and the second is through the underground warehouse. And that's the main part. The underground warehouse is where you're going to be making the real money, like a lot more. The nightclub itself is more so just a bonus on top, so we'll go over that first. When you're in your nightclub, you'll see your popularity meter, and obviously that shows how popular your nightclub is, and that corresponds to how much money you're going to make from it. With a full popularity meter, you'll earn $10,000 every in-game day, which is 48 minutes in real time. As your popularity meter drops, the amount of money you'll earn per hour is going to drop as well. There's two main ways that you can increase your popularity meter. The first is by completing promotion missions where you go out and do a quick mission that's going to promote your nightclub. That's only going to fill about one bar of popularity though. The next way to increase it is to book a new DJ. And the first time you book a new DJ, it'll cost $100,000. And that's going to increase your popularity right up to the max at 100%. Each time you rebook that DJ, it's only going to cost $10,000, but it's only going to go up 10% percent as well. If you want my honest advice for this part, it's honestly not worth worrying about your nightclub popularity. If you've got other businesses to look after or heists to do or other missions to do, you're going to make way, way, way more money doing those and grinding those out than constantly worrying about keeping your nightclub popularity up for a measly $10,000 every 48 minutes. So yeah, I recommend not worrying about it at all. Just let it drop. It's fine. And instead, we're going to focus on the second part of the nightclub, which is the underground warehouse. Once you completely understand it, the underground warehouse for the nightclub is the easiest business in the game to run, and honestly, it's not even close. 
And if you set it up properly, it'll make you millions of dollars for you pretty much doing next to nothing. But it is a lot to get your head around, so this part of the video is probably going to get a little bit boring because unfortunately there are a lot of stats that we need to go through with this, so bear with me. The first thing we should talk about are the upgrades, and there's three upgrades for the nightclub just like every other business, staff, equipment, and security. The staff upgrade will essentially make the nightclub itself more efficient by slowing down how fast your popularity meter will decrease. And for that price, it's not worth it, in my opinion. Like I said, the popularity meter and all that, it's just not worth the hassle. The security upgrade will reduce the chance of your nightclub getting raided. And again, if I'm being honest, even without the upgrade, I think I've only ever been raided once. So again, in my opinion, not worth it. The equipment upgrade, though, will double the amount of money you earn from the nightclub warehouse. So even though it is a little bit expensive, this upgrade is really important if you want to make the most money. So how do you make money from the warehouse? All right, like I said, we've got a few things to go over. As you can see on your screen, there's seven different items that you can create with your warehouse, and each of them actually corresponds to a different business in GTA Online. Cargo and shipments corresponds to either a hangar or a crate warehouse. Sporting goods corresponds to the gun running bunker. South American imports is a cocaine lockup. Pharmaceutical research is a meth lab. Organic produce is a weed farm. Printing and copying is a document forgery office, and cash creation is obviously a counterfeit cash factory. So what that all means is, for example, if you want to be able to create South American imports, you also need to own a cocaine lockup. So like if you look on my screen here, I don't have a weed farm on PC, so the organic produce is locked. I, I can't create organic produce unless I go out and buy a weed farm separately. What makes it even a bit more confusing is that even though I can create, you know, cash, cash creation from here, that has no effect on my actual counterfeit cash factory. Okay, so this doesn't mean I can just stop working on my cash factory. That still operates as normal. This is just extra. So I know, really confusing, but I hope that all makes sense. As you can see up the top there, there's five unlockable technicians for your warehouse, and you'll have to individually assign them to create a certain product. So yes, that means you can only create a maximum of five products at a time if you unlock all of the technicians. And each of these technicians are going to cost a couple hundred thousand dollars each to unlock. So say you've got all of the technicians and you've also got the equipment upgrade as well. Which products should you assign them to? Alright, here's the stats. Cargo and shipments will earn you $8,570 an hour. Sporting goods will get you $7,500 an hour. South American imports will get you $10,000 an hour. Pharmaceutical research, $8,500. Organic produce, $4,500. Printing and copying, 4,000, and cash creation, 7,000 per hour. If you want to increase how much product you can hold before you have to sell, like increase that limit, of course, just buy more storage space. So ideally, if you had all five technicians, you would want to assign them to South American imports, cargo and shipments, pharmaceutical research, sporting goods, and cash creation. Those are the best five. What makes this business so easy to run once you understand that is because you have technicians, you never have to restock this business like all the other ones. Your technicians are going to do all of the work, so you literally don't have to do anything except sell the product when it's full, so it's super easy. And speaking of selling, let's talk about the sell missions. When you sell your product, Tony is going to take 10% of that money, which does kind of suck, but I think it's still better than having to pay for supplies for other businesses, like the profit margin is still going to be better on the nightclub there. You can also buy different vehicles to sell your product in. So the first is the Speedo van, which you start out with. The second is the Mule, which is a slightly bigger truck. And the third is the Pounder, which is a way bigger truck. The Speedo is going to allow you to sell up to 90 crates at once. The Mule is for sell missions with 91 to 180 crates and you'll need the pounder for anything over 180 crates. You can also customize all of these vehicles. Obviously, you'll have your standard customization options just like with any vehicle, but most importantly, you can add armor and weapons to these ones as well. And the point of that is to keep you safe while you're trying to sell your product. Ideally though, you wouldn't be attacked by other players at all. You might have noticed that there's special sell missions as well. And these missions require you to have a certain amount of different products and then you can do like a unique type of sale as opposed to just selling all of your product at once. 
These cell missions are gonna give you about 25% more money, so it's up to you whether you wanna do that or just sell everything at once like you normally would. Personally, I just prefer to do it all at once. I'm a bit lazy, but you might be different. You might want that extra 25%. All right, man, this is a massive business. We're almost at the end. Let's talk about business battles. If you've played a lot of free roam, you've probably noticed business battles going on around you occasionally. These are random missions where different businesses compete and try and steal a certain object. Sometimes it's crates, sometimes it's some sort of vehicle. The goal is to steal that item and get it back to your nightclub before anyone else in the lobby. By doing that, you'll earn extra product for your nightclub. So if you ever see one, you may as well give it a go. The final thing I want to talk about is the terabyte, and the terabyte is essentially a big truck that you can buy when you buy a nightclub. The terabyte is good for a few things. First, you can start client jobs from inside the terabyte, which are really quick and easy missions that can pay up to $30,000 depending on which one you do. My favorites are diamond shopping and robbery in progress. They'll get you the most money. The terabyte costs just under $1.4 million, and after you complete five client jobs from inside, you can actually buy the Oppressor Mark II for a discounted price, about $1 million cheaper, I believe. You can also start steel missions for your other businesses from inside, and you can also start source crate missions for your warehouses as well. So it is a really helpful vehicle to have, and it can make you a lot of money. So I definitely recommend picking it up if you can afford it. Okay, so that's it. That's everything you need to know about the nightclub, and man, that is a lot to get your head around. I honestly don't envy you guys that are coming into GTA Online in 2020, because there is just so much to get your head around. It's kind of ridiculous. So as you can tell with the nightclub, it's not going to be cheap at all. It's going to cost a few million dollars at least if you want to upgrade it. But once it's all set up, it's probably the easiest way to make money in GTA. That's the truth. Like I said at the start of the video, this should be one of the last businesses you buy because like we went over, you can only start making serious money with it if you have the other businesses necessary in order for your technicians to actually be able to create those products. So I definitely suggest getting a bunker, a cocaine lockup, cash factory, meth lab, and crate warehouse before you buy a nightclub. That way, when you set it all up, you'll be able to make the most money possible. So probably about the sixth business you should buy. So man, I hope that helped. If it was too confusing, definitely just go back and check that part out again, because you don't want to be doing this wrong if you can avoid it. So if this video did help, a thumbs up is always appreciated. That's going to help it reach more people like you that want to know how to use this business. And consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Make sure you go join our Discord if you want people to play with and follow me on TikTok as well. But more importantly, make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Poise.